The hydrohalogenation of alkynes involves the addition of HX across one or both pi bonds of the alkyne. The reaction can involve ionic or radical intermediates, and these processes are very similar to the hydrohalogenation reactions of alkenes. Therefore, you may find it useful to review the videos on ionic hydrohalogenation of alkenes and radical hydrohalogenation of alkenes. The regioselectivity, in other words, whether the reaction is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov in nature, depends on the conditions. When HX is the sole reagent, the reaction proceeds with Markovnikov regioselectivity. However, when peroxides are added along with HBr, the regiochemistry is reversed and anti-Markovnikov selectivity is observed. Since alkynes possess two pi bonds, they can undergo the addition of one or two molecules of HX. Let's first consider a generic mechanism for the ionic hydrohalogenation of alkynes. If this mechanism were to begin with a simple protonation of the alkyne pi bond, the intermediate would be a vinylic carbocation. But vinylic carbocations are fairly high in energy, and therefore this intermediate is unlikely. Instead, during the protonation step, the carbon of the alkyne that would otherwise have lost a bond is attacked by a halide from a second molecule of HX. This occurs concurrently with the protonation. So the net result is still the addition of HX across the alkyne pi bond, but the high energy vinylic carbocation was bypassed. And the reaction actually stops here at the vinyl halide if one molar equivalent of HX is used. However, if two equivalents of HX are used, the remaining pi bond can undergo the addition of another molecule of HX. This begins with the protonation of the remaining pi bond. This affords the carbocation that is adjacent to the halogen and the reason is that that particular carbocation can be resonance stabilized by delocalization of the plus charge onto the halogen. In the second step of this portion of the reaction, the halide attacks the electrophilic carbon, the carbon that has carbocation character, and a geminal dihalide product results. As we turn our attention to the radical hydrohalogenation of alkynes, we see that the mechanism for radical hydrohalogenation of an alkene or an alkyne is essentially identical, and therefore you can simply refer to the corresponding video on radical hydrohalogenation of alkenes for guidance on this mechanism. Now let's consider a specific example of ionic hydrohalogenation of alkynes. In this instance, the alkyne substrate is symmetrical, so regiochemistry is not an issue during the first addition of HX. Only one regioisomer can be produced due to the molecule's symmetry. So as expected, an alkyne pi bond is protonated by one molecule of HBr, while a second molecule of HBr donates bromide to the carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. This produces the vinyl bromide product in which the net result has been the addition of HBr across one alkyne pi bond. If we elect to use a second equivalent of HBr in this reaction, the vinyl bromide can be protonated, and this protonation provides only one carbocation, and that is the carbocation 
that is resonance stabilized by its adjacent bromine. In the second step of this portion of the reaction, bromide attacks the electrophilic carbon, the one that has carbocation character, and a geminal dibromide is formed as the sole reaction product. When internal unsymmetrical alkynes are used as substrates, we obtain mixtures of products. For instance, in this specific example, 2-pentine is the reactant. During the initial addition of HBr across one of the alkyne pi bonds, there is no basis for selectivity because both of the alkyne carbons have the same level of substitution. And therefore, we obtain two regioisomeric vinyl bromides. If these regioisomeric vinyl bromides were treated with a second equivalent of HBr, we would see that each adds another equivalent of HBr so as to form the corresponding geminal dibromide. Although the first step of the reaction had no basis for selectivity, each of these vinyl bromides will be selectively protonated so as to form only the carbocation that has resonance stabilization. And it is that carbocation that then attracts bromide, thereby leading to geminal dibromide products. Nevertheless, this reaction yields two geminal dibromides and not a single product, so we do obtain a mixture. On the other hand, when a terminal alkyne is the substrate, there is a basis for selectivity during the initial addition of HX. Specifically, this addition will follow Markonikov's mnemonic. That is to say that the alkyne carbon possessing more hydrogens will acquire the new proton. As the alkyne is protonated, positive charge begins to develop on one of the two alkyne carbons. And it's clearly preferable for that positive charge to develop on the more highly substituted carbon, the secondary carbon. And therefore, it is that secondary carbon which attracts chloride, leaving us with specifically one vinyl chloride product in which the alkyne carbon that had more hydrogens to begin with has acquired the new proton. If we choose to use two equivalents of HCl, the second addition also proceeds with Markonikov selectivity. The remaining pi bond is protonated so as to yield only the resonance stabilized carbocation. And it is that carbocation that attracts chloride, and therefore we obtain the geminal dichloride in which the carbon of the vinyl chloride that had more protons to begin with, has acquired the new proton during the reaction. When the same terminal alkyne is treated with HBr and peroxides, a radical hydrohalogenation is observed. In this instance, the regiochemistry is reversed and an anti-Markonikov vinyl bromide product is obtained. Let's briefly consider the stereochemistry of ionic hydrohalogenation. The addition of the first equivalent of HX is typically anti. However, if a second equivalent of HX is added, stereochemistry becomes irrelevant since the reactive carbons will each acquire two identical new substituents. In other words, one carbon acquires two new hydrogens, whereas the other carbon acquires two new halogens. And these carbons are therefore not 
stereo centers. Carbocation rearrangement is not a concern in these reactions. It does not occur in ionic hydrohalogenation. When we think about the mechanism of that reaction, the first addition of HX does not proceed through a carbocation intermediate and therefore no rearrangement is possible. If we choose to use a second equivalent of HX, the second addition does proceed through a carbocation intermediate. However, the carbocation is resonance stabilized and therefore does not rearrange. If it were to rearrange, it would lose that desirable resonance stabilization. If we consider radical hydrohalogenation, that reaction has no carbocation intermediates, and so carbocation rearrangement is not a concern there either. In summary, ionic hydrohalogenation adds HX across an alkyne pi bond with Markovnikov regiochemistry to yield a vinyl halide. A second equivalent of HX can be added, and that would afford a geminal dihalide. Stereochemistry is not an issue when two equivalents of HX are added, and carbocation rearrangement does not occur. The use of HBr and peroxides affords anti-Markovnikov selectivity through a radical mechanism. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.